Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Brianna and today I'm getting into another Lush All Year Round product guide and this one is for soaps. Now this has been uh, requested quite a few times uh, from you guys so I thought I would do one. And yeah, this is going to be in alphabetical order like all the other ones I've done so far. Uh, I will be including some discontinuing products uh, in this uh, video just because there may be still some of them available where you are in the world and yeah that's pretty much what I'm gonna do so let's get into it and yeah no limited edition products either so no golden pear soap or snow cake soap or anything like that so yeah if you want reviews on those I'll leave those linked down below as well first soap is the 13 unlucky for dirt soap now this has got a little bit of a mark on it probably from being stored near the rose argan soap which i'll be getting into very soon as well uh, now this one contains manuka honey rose absolute oregano oil and geranium oil uh, for these uh, videos i will only be talking about the scent ingredients of these soaps most of them have a very similar sort of base it's usually rapeseed oil coconut oil that sort of thing some of them do sort of vary depending on the soap, but you can go look up that information if you want, or you can look at my dedicated review uh, on each of these if you are interested, which I will link as well. So yes, back to uh, 13 are lucky for dirt. This was a soap that was released a long, long, long time ago. There was a version of this, um, I think it's the same version anyway, that was available many years ago. And it was at the request of a nurse in the UK who wanted a antibacterial soap from Lush and loved Lush soaps in general. And yeah, Lush decided to come through with the goods and bring it back uh, or bring it out, should I say, create one and bring it out. And then they brought it back uh, during this whole COVID situation that's going on at the moment, uh, obviously because there is a more concern about, you know, obviously the virus itself and being hygienic throughout this time. And yeah, that, that's pretty much the story on that. Now, the smell itself is really quite mild. You do get that sort of a little bit of the sweetness from the honey, sort of a natural sweetness. The rose is definitely there. You get that floral hit without being too heavy on the florals. Uh, but it smells like very fresh rose, basically. And the oregano oil and the geranium oil, oregano obviously is, um, you know, a very strong sort of woody herb. Works really well in this formula. And geranium is obviously another type of floral. So yeah, it, it's a very nice soap. I really enjoy it. Um, yeah, it's it's very different from anything else in Lush's range in terms of scent. And I, I quite enjoy that. So yeah. Next soap I have is the Bohemian soap. This is the old style um, Bohemian soap, by the way, guys. They're, most of these soaps are now in block format, like the 13 Unlucky for Dirt that I just showed you. Um, so yeah, some of these are sort of in the older style, but most of them will have that sort of block look to them. So more of a square, uh, look to it, but this is one of the older style ones that came in the rectangular kind of, uh, look. Yes. So this one just has lemon oil as its scent ingredient. So what you get from this is it, it, it does have a sweetness to it as well. It almost smells like a really nice natural lemonade that you would make yourself at home. So you would squeeze your lemons, you would add your sugar um, and your water and stir it up. That's basically what it smells like to me, like a more mild version of a homemade lemonade, basically. So if you like that sort of smell, lemons or lemonade in general, uh, you would definitely enjoy that one. And yeah, it's a nice one to have. Next one is coal face soap. Now I don't actually have this soap with me currently uh, in my collection, but I am including it because it is a facial soap. So I thought I, I would do facial soaps at once as well. So it has licorice root, powdered charcoal, rosewood oil, and sandalwood oil. Now the smell from my recollection, it did have that sort of charcoaly smell to it. Um, there was that sort of woodsy smell from it with the rosewood and the sandalwood there as well. Um, once again, quite a mild scent, not nothing too strong. And the licorice root, you know, a lot of people, when they think of licorice root, they think of, you know, licorice as in the sweet, um, nothing like that. It doesn't smell anything like that. And it's got, okay, there's a little bit of an aniseedy kind of smell, but it's not sweet or anything like that. It's just the way it is. 
Uh, now this facial soap lasts a very, very long time. Um, mine, I got my 100 gram one and it lasted for months and months and months. And yeah, it's definitely one of the more economical products in Lush's range. So I do recommend getting some of it if you can, because um, it is a very good quality product. And it worked pretty well for my skin. I didn't sort of notice any extra breakouts or anything like that. It is sort of aimed at um, minimizing breakouts and that sort of thing. So I feel like it worked for me um, and did the job. So yeah. Next product I have for you is the Figs and Leaves Soap. Now this is a body soap. Uh, it's got Fig Deconcoction, Fair Trade Organic Aloe Vera Gel, Lang Lang Oil, Orange Flower Absolute. Oh, just such an interesting scent, this one. So obviously you get that sort of really nice floral hit to it. Um, you, you're definitely going to smell the fig as well. Like there's definitely a little bit of a fruity thing going on with it as well. And it's got a sweetness to it. So it's, it's definitely one of those soaps that is a little bit different once again from other scents in Lush's range. And yeah, I, I quite enjoy it. I sort of put off buying it for a while because the scent didn't really grab me at first, but it's sort of grown on me. It's, it's quite a nice smell. And it does come with leaves inside the soap as well. And I don't know if you saw before when I brought it up, it's got those little dots, um, which are sort of like scrubbing bits, um, which are from the figs. I'm guessing it looks like fig seeds to me. And they do a really good job of sort of lightly scrubbing your skin without being too uh, harsh. So yeah, it's pretty good in that way. Next one is Fresh Pharmacy. This is also a facial soap. Uh, and it has calamine powder, lavender oil, chamomile blue oil, tea tree oil, and rose absolute. So it's a similar formula to Coalface. This one probably um, sort of runs out a little bit quicker than Coalface, but very, very similar in terms of texture and the way they sort of act on the skin. Um, Coalface definitely has that little bit of a scrubbing action with the powdered charcoal, whereas Fresh Pharmacy doesn't have anything that's sort of scrubbing it. The calamine powder and those sorts of things are meant for redness in the skin to help clear that redness up. It's sort of marketed at dry skin or very sensitive skin, red skin. Um, yeah, I had no issues with this product. Um, you know, I'm quite a pale person. I do get some redness, but I, I don't have rosacea or eczema or anything like that. So I can't really comment on that level of redness. But what I will say is I did enjoy the product. I didn't really notice a huge reduction of any redness that I had. I just thought it was a nice product and I didn't break out with it either. So that worked out really well for me. Yeah. Next product is the Goddess Soap. This is another one I currently don't have in my collection, but it has white tea infusion, jasmine absolute, osmanthus uh, oil, rose oil, sandalwood oil, and oud oil. So the Goddess Soap is modeled after the Goddess fragrance. It sort of reminds me of a Middle Eastern bazaar, you know, like going through a market in the Middle East. That's basically how I see it. It's quite spicy. Um, it's got that sort of floral tone to it, just a nice little floral in the background, a little bit of sweetness as well. There's definitely a sweetness going on in here. The white tea infusion, I didn't really notice that in this product. Um, yeah, it just didn't the tea part of it just didn't really click with me. I, I didn't smell that in there. So yeah, and the oud is definitely the star of the show. It definitely gives it that little bit of a smokiness as well uh, to the product. So yeah, it's, it's a very nice soap as well. Next one is the Good Day Sunshine. This one is being discontinued um, and it has left many sites already uh, around the world. So this one contains lemon myrtle. Uh, oh, what have I written there? Lime, lime, oh my goodness, my spelling's atrocious. Or well, the way I've written it's atrocious, actually. Neroli and chia seeds, so neroli oil and lime oil. So it has, it does have a very citrusy smell to it, as you would assume. Uh, very citrusy, very fresh, not traditional sort of citrus smell that you get from Lush, not like Calacas or Avocado Co-Wash or any of those sort of classic smells. Definitely in a league of its own and something a little bit different. And if you have sort of been looking at Lush for a while and you love your citrus smells, but you're looking for something a little bit different, I recommend picking up this soap while you can because it is, it is a really nice uh, smell. And yeah, it sort of just lifts your mood. It's one of those ones that just lifts your mood, makes you feel good. So why not buy it? Yeah. 
Next one is a, another cult classic. Now it has been discolored a little bit, once again, being stored near all the other soaps. Honey, I Wash the Kids. Now this is the brand new bar format with the beeswax on top like that, or that design, beautiful. Oh, love this smell so much. This is one of my favorite soaps, if not my favorite, I think, definitely. It's got Australian honey, sweet wild orange oil, bergamot oil, gardenia extract, and aloe vera. So honey, I wash the kids in terms of a scent family in general. You do get that honey smell, obviously, that's a given. Um, there's sort of like an undertone of florals as well. So it gives, you, gives it that sort of, yeah, that little bit of a nature-like smell to it. Um, almost like you're walking through a meadow type of thing, like spring flowers type of vibe. Um, and yeah, you do get obviously a little bit of sweetness from the bergamot and the freshness as well, but it's not prominent. It's just kind of there in the background, just helping out kind of thing. And yeah, I love the formula of this uh, soap. I think the formula is really good. It does last quite a while compared to the, some of the other soaps in Lush's range. And yeah, very nice smell, all that sort of thing. Can't complain. Next soap I have for you is the Karma Soap. Once again, this is an older style uh, of uh, soap. It does come in a slab form now like the Honey I Wash the Kids. Mm, love this one so much. This is one of my favorites as well. So it's got patchouli oil, Brazilian orange oil, lavadin oil, Siberian fire needle or pine needle. Did I? Oh, my goodness. What have I done here? It looks like fire needle, but I think it I think it's pine needle. Uh, lemongrass oil and alimi oil my handwriting I was writing these down um, just freehand so excuse my uh, yeah my poor spelling and my poor writing uh, so yeah karma scent beautiful beautiful scent family it does divide people um, I've I, I, I like it I, I I used to not really like it I used to think oh this scent is not for me and then I started to like it and then I started to love it. I feel like that's the progression most people have with karma. You either really like it or really hate it. Um, and yeah, definitely if you don't like patchouli, you won't like this scent. You really do have to like patchouli. The Brazilian orange oil is very strong in this as well. So if you don't like orange smells or citrusy smells, you won't like it. And the pine needle, there's always that sort of piney, greeny smell to this as well. So Definitely keep that in mind and those sorts of three cents in your mind if you are considering buying this. Uh, yeah, I, I recommend it if you are looking for something, once again, a little bit different. does kind of smell like hippies from the 70s. Uh, you know, it's that kind of vibe. Uh, so if you like that sort of thing or think that that would suit you, I definitely recommend it. Okay, so the next soap I have is the Lemon Zest Soap. This is a fairly... Um, yeah, this is the fairly recent change uh, with the packaging and in the slab format now. So this one has Sicilian lemon oil, lemon peel, rosewood oil, lemon myrtle oil, and almond oil. Oh, it's so good. So this is definitely a more mild take on a lemon smell. When I read the words lemon zest, I assumed it would be more punchy and more strong. That's not the case. This is more like a lemon meringue kind of smell or lemon curd kind of smell it's a little bit more mild um a little bit more creamy um yeah it's just it's obviously got that lemon myrtle in there which cuts through a lot of the acidity and a lot of that citrus scent lemon myrtle is kind of um in the same sort of realm as eucalyptus and tea tree it has that sort of uh, menthol -y kind of smell to it but it doesn't mean that this soap is like mentholy or pepperminty or anything like that it just gives it that little bit of something and i feel like the almond oil is the thing that's sort of smoothing things out here uh the rosewood just adds that little bit of depth to it as well so yeah gives it a nice all-round pleasant smell okay the next one i have is the lotus flower soap that's what it looks like one of the newer formulas from lush uh, and the newer soaps it's definitely quite a soft uh soap as well smells amazing and this one has lotus root bushu oil lemon myrtle oil and tolu balsam so i don't get lotus flower from this i don't get floral from this i get sweet i get berry like smells from this it's almost like um if you think of the comforter i know a lot of people are familiar with the comforter scent uh which is 
quite a blackberry kind of smell if it's kind of if you mix that with fresh strawberries and fresh raspberries and kind of muddled it all together that's kind of the smell i get from this so don't be fooled by the name uh if you want something that smells a bit like berries buy this mm, it smells so scrummy i really really enjoy it next one i have is the maypole soap now you can already see some of the liquid uh, from the other soap leaking on it i'll turn it around for you this one is getting discontinued and is a leaving soon product this one has canadian maple syrup peppermint oil and gardenia extract so it's a very very simple scent profile it smells like candy canes basically um, if you can imagine the candy cane scent being that sort of mild pepperminty kind of smell don't really get any gardenia from this the maple syrup's there obviously to add the sweetness um, and soften the bar uh, the soap bar as well and i really enjoyed the design it was one of my favorite designs that lush did um, before they sort of brought in all these block style soaps and yeah, I, I really love it. I think it, I think it's a beautiful uh, design and a nice smell. And once again, I probably left it a little bit too late to buy this soap. I just, yeah, I, I never used to be a peppermint person. I never used to like peppermint in any form, even toothpaste. I would never buy mint toothpaste. Now it's sort of growing on me. I think as you grow up and uh, get used to different scents and things, your taste kind of change. So that's what's happened to me. Yeah. Next soap is the Movis, and this is a facial soap as well. This one has wheat bran, wheat germ, wheat germ oil, hop oil, sandalwood oil, and labdomum resinoid. This soap is basically like a cake, <laughs> like like a bread cake. I I would I would say it's quite squishy. Um, there's a like it says in the ingredients, there's a lot of wheat bran and wheat germ in there, so it it feels like no other facial soap I've ever used in my life. It's very very interesting. It's one of my favorite facial soaps from Lush. All of the facial soaps are pretty good that I've tried. Like I, I never had any issues with them. They all did a good job. Um, it, those little wheat germ pieces sort of come off when you're washing your face and they add that little bit of a scrubbing uh, texture to the product. And yeah, it kind of just smells like rye bread or, um, you know, stone ground bread, you know, that very, the bread that's really good for you. <laughs> and has a lot of fiber in it that kind of bread if you can imagine the health food store bread or um you know the bread that your grandparents used to eat you know way 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 back in the day when they used to have to grind um the stones uh, like stone grind the wheat themselves uh you know that sort of thing that old style bread or even if you think back now we don't want to go too far back but even in medieval times and things like that back when they used to eat um yeah that sort of very dark colored bread and yeah very very interesting and then they added all sorts of weird things to make it look more white and more pure um yeah lots of toxic things as well interesting but yes i i digress uh yeah that's pretty much what the mova soap is all about Next one is the olive tree soap. Now this is a gourmet soap from Lush. So as you can see, the oil is just seeping out of it. Whenever there's a slightly warm day here, um, the oil just loves to come out and play in the soap. Uh, it's just the nature of the product. It has green olives, cypress oil, pettigrain oil, rose oil, and gardenia oil. So this, to me, it just smells like very fresh olives. Now, obviously not uh, you know, the olives that you get in the brine that have been, uh, you know, pickled, uh, nothing like that. It's very, it's got that sort of olive oil smell. If you've ever smelt really good, high quality, fresh olive oil, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, the type of olive oil that has that sort of silt in it, um, or that sort of cloudiness to it, the really good quality stuff. Um, it does have a little bit of a sweetness to it and a little bit of that floral vibe from the rose and all that sort of thing and a little bit of a woodsy uh, vibe from it with the cypress as well. So it's a very well-balanced scent. It's not too strong. It's not too weak in terms of scent. It's very nice and I think it's an appropriate scent for the product as well. So yeah, and the gourmet soaps are basically soaps that have a much higher oil content um, and they're meant as a more relaxing sort of bar and for people who have very dry very sensitive skin um so yeah that's basically what that's all about next one is the outback mate soap you can actually see where the oil from the olive tree soap where it's been leaning on it has uh 
going on there. So this has eucalyptus oil, lemongrass oil, and peppermint oil. Mmm, such a nice, refreshing scent. Now, this is a soap that was created after my own country and people from my country, which is Australia, wanting a soap that rec represents them and their sort of uh, feelings on eucalyptus products. We, in our culture, a lot of people use eucalyptus and tea tree and lemon myrtle and those sorts of things um, in cleaning products. Uh, to do laundry, uh, for antibacterial, antiviral purposes, just all sorts of, you know, things around the home. And, yeah, it's sort of like a multi-purpose kind of ingredient. And a lot of people wanted a soap after that scent because it's something that a lot of Australians have grown up with, are very familiar with that sort of scent. Um, yeah, so people requested that and Lush said, okay, we'll make one of those and yeah, it's just stuck around in the range ever since. It was made a very, very long time ago. I think about 20 years ago we're talking because uh, Lush came to Australia in 1997 and it was not long after that, I believe, that there was a request from the Australian people of Lush lovers, <laughs> the Australian Lush lovers, to get um, this soap made. So very, very interesting. And I love the name of it, obviously. And, yeah, quite a, quite a cool one. Next product is the Parsley Porridge Soap. This is one that is getting discontinued and won't be in the range for much longer. It has fresh organic parsley, thyme oil, sandalwood oil, grapefruit oil, tea tree oil, and fresh aloe. So this soap is really, really interesting. It's got this sort of pebbled um, effect on the top of it, which has a really nice softening um sort of scrubbing action and then on the other side you've got all these pieces of fresh parsley and this sort of rougher uh, side and this also has sort of a cleansing uh, scrubbing ability as well it's very very cool it's a really nice one um i really really enjoy this soap you would think i probably wouldn't enjoy this soap just from the ingredients um it is quite a herbally kind of smell you really do have to like parsley to enjoy this. If you don't like parsley or the smell of it, you probably won't enjoy this. Uh, yeah, there's definitely the thyme there and other sort of herbal influences going on. The sandalwood is definitely there. You get that nice sort of woodsy undertone. Uh, and yeah, I feel like the grapefruit and the tea tree and that sort of thing are just sort of there to freshen it up, but they're not sort of overly noticeable in the product. Just kind of there to help out if you get what I mean. Next product is the Poppy Soap. This is also another one that is leaving the range soon. That's what we're looking at. So this has got chia seed gel, bergamot oil, blackcurrant absolute, cypress oil, and poppy seeds. As you can see, there's quite a few poppy seeds on this one. Um, oh, I love the smell of this. It's just so good. Oh, so as you can imagine, the blackcurrant absolute is definitely the star of the show here. You do get that sort of very rich, fruity, sweet smell with this. Um, you know, the bergamot's definitely there to sort of freshen things up and just give that little bit of lively um, vibe to this product. Um, yeah, it's just very, very nice. Obviously, the cypress oil there, you know, in some capacity just adds that little bit of a base note to it. But yeah, overall, it is sort of that fruity, sweet sort of smell. Um, it it doesn't have like a ton of fruitiness to it. It's just very nice and, um, you know, mild enough that most people would enjoy it and use it. So, yeah, it's very, very good. Next product is the Respect Your Elders. This is also a Leaving Soon product. And I looked at the Lush website yesterday and this was still in stock. So if you are looking for it, uh, well, Lush Australia, by the way, not UK. Uh, if you are looking for it and you're an Australian, I would get onto this straight away. So this has elderberries, a bergamot oil, bushu oil, cypress oil, and olibanum oil. So once again, you are getting quite a rich, fruity kind of smell with this product. It is quite sweet as well. Um, the elderberry is definitely the star of the show here. Once again, the bergamot there is the supporting act, kind of giving it that freshness as well. Bushu oil is known uh, to give sort of like a peach-like quality uh, to uh, products, especially in Lush's range. Uh, any product that sort of has a nice fruity smell to it will usually have Bushu oil in it. It's a very, very nice addition. And Olibanum is also something that you'll find in things like Plum Rain, uh, well, Shower Gel, that's been discontinued, unfortunately. But in the Plum Rain, Scent Family has Olibanum, and that's also quite a deep, rich fruity scent so yeah that's basically the best way I can describe that one 
Next product is rhubarb and custard. This is also a fairly new, uh, what do you call it, soap. I should know this. I'm staring right at it. A soap in Lush's range. It came out at the same time that the Lotus Flower Soap came out. It's got rhubarb puree, Brazilian orange oil, and bergamot oil. So if you'll notice, the Honey I Wash the Kids soap also had Brazilian orange and bergamot. So those two are sort of the supporting actors um, and giving it that freshness as well. The rhubarb puree obviously is the star of the show, giving it that sort of very real, fruity, deep kind of scent. And Oh, it just smells so refreshing um, and just so awesome. And the custard part, I guess, comes from the fact that it's got a little bit of a creaminess to it as well. I, I would describe the soap as rhubarb, creamy rhubarb, I guess. I, I wouldn't say custard, but I like the name. I think the name is cute and appropriate um, and it makes you want to buy it. So I, I totally get where Lush is going with that and why they did that. Uh, so, yeah, it's a nice one. Next one is the Rose Argan Soap. As you can see, also melting a little bit. And there's the top. I'm going to pop this one back down before it melts through my hands. It's already melting onto them. Uh, this one has lemon oil, geranium oil, rose absolute and rose oil. So Rose Argan is a very famous scent family or the Rose Jam scent family is quite famous with Lush. Basically smells like you took um, a whole thing of rose petals, put it in a pot, boiled it up with sugar, extracted the liquid. That's the scent you would get. So it's quite a sweet rose-like scent. Uh, it tends to have lemon oil in it and that just freshens things up, adds that little bit of a, yeah, freshness to the rose smell um, and not so, yeah, and not so artificial or fake or anything like that, just freshens it up a bit. Geranium oil, once again, is sort of like the supporting actor here. It's not really noticeable in any sort of way. It's just there to help the scent in general and keep that sort of um, freshness and that sort of floral smell alive. So yeah, that's pretty much it for that one. Next product is the sandstone soap. So there we go. That's what it looks like. I'll show you the side that I used. This one's got Litze Cubeba oil, coriander oil, and gardenia extract. I didn't get a lot of uh, coriander in this scent. Uh, the gardenia, once again, sort of like the supporting act. It's not really there uh, that much. But the Litze Cubeba oil, now Litze Cubeba oil gives a very lemony smell to products. And this has got a definite knockout lemon smell to it. Oh yeah, that is that is lemon smell through and through. There is sort of a um, milkiness to this soap, just a little bit of a milkiness, um, and it also has a little bit of a sweetness as well. But primarily, the soap has that sort of lemon smell to it. Uh, the sandstone, the sandstone soap, that's a bit of a tongue twister. Uh, has that sort of scrubbing capability as well, obviously because it has real sand in it. Um, so I kind of put off buying it for a while because I wasn't sure how that would react with my skin and being, you know, I don't have sensitive skin or anything like that, but I am a bit of a baby when it comes to body scrubs. I don't like the really harsh ones. And yeah, this was no problem. This is a very, very mild uh, sort of scrubbing action. So I didn't have any issues with it. I, I found it quite pleasant and enjoyable to use. Next product is the sea vegetable soap. Now I've just got my little sample of sea vegetable here to show you all. And that's the top of it. This has coarse sea salt, seaweed, uh, lime oil, lavender oil, and seaweed absolute. Mm. So this one has a good mix of that sort of lavender smell, obviously quite floral and a little bit of a herbal smell. The lime is obviously there as a citrus uh, scent and a refresher of the scent. Uh, I don't really smell the seaweed in this, really, the seaweed absolute. I don't really smell it in this. Uh, I do like the fact that it has that coarse sea salt and seaweed on the top. It kind of adds a layer of that little bit of a scrubbing action as well. So it's sort of a two-in-one product once again, which I quite enjoy. Uh, the smell is just very, very meh. You know, it, it's it's a take-it-or-leave-it kind of smell. It's kind of boring for Lush. Um, but I get that Lush has to have a few sort of more boring or normal smells in their range to appeal to everyone, which I, I totally understand. So it's not a strongly scented soap. It's quite mild. And it's the sort of soap that you could use for your kids um, or give as a gift and not worry so much about um, if someone would like the smell or what else. So, yeah. 
Next soap is the Sleepy Soap. Once again, this is just a little sample of it. This has got lavender oil, benzoin resinoid, tonka absolute, and lang lang oil. So the Sleepy Scent family, pretty much characterized by that lavendery, vanillary, lang lang smell. The lavender is very prominent in it, so obviously giving the floral smell and that little bit of a herbal touch. The lavender, um, not the lavender, the vanilla is very strong in this as well, so it gives it that sort of roundness and smoothness of scent. And you get that Lang Lang oil, which adds a more floral tone, um, sort of that white floral kind of smell, that more fresher floral than what a lavender uh, scent could provide. And yeah, I really like the smell of this. I wish it was more strong. Um, yeah, it's more on that mild side, sort of like sea vegetable. Yeah, it, it look, it's still pleasant and it's not as mild as sea vegetable, but I, considering the scent of the shower gel and also the body lotion where they're quite strongly scented, I would have liked a little bit more of, of the scent in there. And it is one of the soaps that tends to disappear quite quickly um, on the skin because I feel like this is a softer formula and a formula that melts more easily. So yeah, it, it doesn't last as long, unfortunately. And the last soap is the Sultana of Soap. Now this one has dried currants, apricots and cranberries, olibanum oil and bergamot oil. So this is one of those soaps where the scent notes don't really tell the whole story about it. It basically does smell like sultanas, like a creamy sultana smell, almost like you put some sultanas in a bowl or dried fruits in general, and you soak them in milk or cream overnight. And the liquid that you get left is basically what it smells like. It's quite creamy and milky. Um, and yeah, it has that sort of soapy smell to it as well. There's a real clean freshness to this as well. Mm, just oh, it's one of my favorites as well one of my top five uh soaps i reckon and the olibanum and the bergamot mm, they don't really play a role here um i don't really notice them in this product uh that's just me one thing that is really good about this new design of the uh sultana of soap soap is there is definitely less fruit in this so you do get more bar um for your buck and they also have these smaller pieces on the top which add that sort of scrubbing layer as well. I do like that Lush is sort of in the more newer uh, soaps and the newer um, reincarnations of older soaps. They are sort of considering that two-in-one kind of action with a soap and people who are busy obviously nowadays and can't, you know, do a body scrub every few days, you know, they may be busy with work or whatever else they're doing. This is also a good option just to do a quick scrub over and be done with it. So yeah, I really love what Lush is doing with soaps uh, at the moment, and I love pretty much most of these soaps. It's hard to hate a soap. Um, you know, most of them do exactly what they say. You know, they wash your body. That's pretty much what you would need as a base uh, for a soap. So, yeah, I really enjoy them. And thank you very much for watching this all year round product guide on the soaps. And hopefully you enjoyed it. And yeah, hopefully I'll see you around on the channel again soon. If you haven't subscribed already, I highly consider or highly recommend. Yeah, I highly recommend that you consider subscribing. That's where I was going with that because I post a lot of Lush content and there's always something new coming out. So if that sounds like your thing, please do that. And until next time, take care and I hope to see you very soon. Bye for now.